We're going to set up an eight column and eight row grid on this eight and a half by 14 document. And what I wanna do is ensure that that grid that I'm setting up applies throughout the entire document rather than on one page or just two pages. Now, if I was to set that up where I'm currently residing in this pages panel, the blue indicating that I'm looking at pages one and two, then it would only apply to those pages or just page one if I'm double clicked on that. So what I wanna do is go to my parent pages in the top of the pages panel. I'm gonna double click on page one in the parent pages, the one to the left there. And I'm actually going to hold shift and select the one next to it. Now what that does is ensure that whatever I'm gonna do next is going to apply on both of those pages. I'll hold space down just to move my page into the center screen here. And I'm going to go to the layout menu. And what I'm gonna do is show two ways that we can do this. One of those is to go to the margins and columns and add in the columns and then we later add in the, the rows using guides. Unfortunately, we can't do both the columns and the rows in here. So what we would do is with preview selected, remember anytime you see preview, turn it on so that you can see what's going to happen when you say okay. Now I can go to eight here, eight columns, and that's showing that on both those pages in my parent, that's going to happen, meaning that it's happening throughout all of the pages in my document. Right now we're looking at the parent. Remember what we do on the parent is going to happen throughout all pages. Now what I would do after this is go to create guides in the layout and I would work on the rows. I'll select preview again and I'll go and make eight and we can see that applying. I'll say okay. And if I go to page one, page two, three, and four, we can see that that is applied to all of them. Now, if I was going to do that without using the separate columns in the actual layout, because remember the rows have been done in guides, those guides can be removed, they can be turned off. If I do command and colon, all of that's going to turn off. I can go to view, and I can go to uh, hide my guides. So I will go here, hide guides. That's gonna happen as well. That's why we did command colon. But what I really wanna do is actually have these showing as all guides in this case. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do undo and get rid of all that. I'll go back to my parent, double click, hold shift, make sure I'm doing this on both, space, and drag and I'm going to go to again create guides only this time I'm going to do the same in rows and columns so I'll do eight in the rows and I'll do eight in the columns and in the gutter you can leave that as a default that's pretty much an ideal default that we have that set at. If we are really working with a tight space and we have a lot of content, we need to make some very slight adjustments to that spacing. We go in and we adjust the gutters, but typically we really do try to avoid that. So I'll say, okay. And there we have on all of our pages, we've got our eight columns and eight rows. And remembering that when we work with the columns and rows, we are using those columns as the designate for content. So for example, if I was to bring an image into here and I'm just gonna use a, a box, I'll give it some color. If I was using an image, I'd go out from the bleed. And if I wanted to bring it in, what I would try to avoid doing is landing it here because now it's actually in a gutter. So what I would do is make sure that that is in content, it's ending in content. Of course, we're gonna cross over some of those gutters, but we're ending in a con at the end of a content space, at the side of it here and at the bottom of it there. So now if I bring in another shape, if I brought one in here, I'm just holding my space bar down to move it as I draw it, and I'll let go of space. 
and then I go over to my gutter here. Now we have that spacing. That spacing that we've established there, I'll just get this exact, that becomes a spatial aspect of the entire layout. I'll turn my grids off, command colon, and we can see that's just a small example of how we use these grids and guides or what we also know as col columns and rows. Remember also, if you have to adjust your margins, you can do that from the layout menu as well. Even if you may have done them in the document setup, you can go back and you can adjust your margins here. If you wanted to change all of them universally or if you wanted to just change them um, one by one by deselecting the link, and also remembering that if you're gonna do something and you want it to be done on a single page, you make sure that you're selected on that page. And if you wanna do something document wide, make sure that you go up into your parent pages and you can do it there. Working with the pages, always remember that what is shown in blue here and what is shown in blue on the pages, that's what you're working on. So we always wanna be careful that we're not setting up our grids and guides in the parent and then starting to work because we're actually putting the artwork down on the parent pages where we wanna go into the interior content pages and actually work there. So I'll just double click in there. And now I know when I start placing my artwork, I'll be working in these pages.